I think uh, this subject is catching our attention because of uh, the ascendancy of Donald Trump uh, to the U.S. Uh, to the White House. Because the U.S. is still the only global power, and uh, when this president adopts the America First slogan, checks his country as the victim of the international order that the U.S. itself had largely created and rejects globalization and walks out of vital international agreements like the Paris Agreement on Climate Change and Hector the UN and cuts funding and walks out of UNESCO and snipes at the WTO. Naturally, doubts arise whether we are entering into a different phase in global governance. But you know, what was mentioned uh, by Mr. Meek in passing, uh, I don't believe that multilateralism has always defined the working of the international system so far and that we are somehow moving away from it, with, from it for the first time. I think this is a wrong analysis of the situation. Uh, first of all, the United Nations itself, which embodies multilateralism in the true sense, has not been able to perform efficiently because it is seriously flawed structurally. And as we have seen, it is glaringly, has been glaringly ineffective operationally in dealing with uh, so many issues which affects the interests of the international community as a whole. Now, power, as we know, is concentrated in the UN Security Council and within it, in the hands of the five permanent members. So, both with regard to power equations within the Security Council and as between it and the UN General Assembly, there are inbuilt inequalities that erode the practice of multilateralism. multilateralism. The veto power in the hands of the government members erodes multilateralism all the more because as we have seen in many instances, any permanent member can defy the broad will of the international community uh, to protect its parochially defined national interests. We know that multilateralism did not work during the Cold War when the world was divided into two camps and the non-aligned countries formed another group. Uh, the two poor superpowers, the US and the Soviet Union, engaged in proxy wars in third countries and created instabilities that hurt the interests of vulnerable countries. From the Indian point of view, uh, in nuclear and missile areas, a handful of countries uh, retained the freedom to possess and develop them with tight restrictions imposed on the rest of the world so that the global power equations remain in their favor. Uh, multilateral negotiations have been used by a handful of power and powerful countries to forge agreements that formalize their special status and privileges such as the NPT. Uh, alternatively, multilateralism has been ignored in forging cartels to deny, to deny access to nuclear missile, dual use or advanced technologies to countries outside the restrictive clubs such as the MTCR, the Vasnar Agreement, or the Nuclear Suppliers Group. Now, India complains less about these things because uh, we have been uh, we have been admitted into some of these groups. Uh, but if one was to look intellectually at the situation, this is uh, what it is. And when military alliances like NATO, Mr. Week worked in NATO, engaged in out-of-area operations, and that too without the approval of the UN. It is also at the expense of multilateralism. Now, those who are perturbed by the America-centered approach to the Trump administration uh, should recall that uh, previous administration, whether of Bush Senior or Clinton or Bush Junior, Junior or Obama, they have been denigrating the UN and they've been making dismissive references to it, uh, to the need to obtain its approval for action. Uh, some of the U.S. ambassadors to the U.N. have been very abrasive about the U.N. itself, including the current uh, U.S. ambassador Nikki Haley. And I recall many statements by, by U.S. leaders that the U.S. would prefer to act with the U.N. approval, but that it would be ready to act without it if it just necessary. Now, after the collapse of the Soviet Union, we have seen the phase of U.S. unilateralism, which in the sense of uh, asking the question about multilateralism being at crossroads was far more serious. Uh, and, and then they engaged in the changing policies in West Asia, in the aggressive promotion of democracy, 
and of course uh, one can have different views, but expansion of NATO eastwards and so on. Uh, if you recall the Vietnam War that was fought by America without UN approval, but more recently uh, its military action in Yugoslavia and Iraq was without UN approval. The coalition of the willing force to make a war on Iraq was certainly not an exercise of multilateralism. Uh, US uh, and NATO members have taken military action against Gaddafi's Libya that exceeded the UN mandate. And the, U and the U.S. is today involved in Syria with neither US, U.N. approval nor at the request of the U.N. recognized government of Syria. Now, there are other instances where previous U.S. administrations have abandoned multilateralism because its exceptional status as the foremost global power allows it to do so without paying a price. Uh, it negotiated the Convention on the Law of the Sea but has not ratified it. It also negotiated the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty, but has not ratified it. Uh, it, ha it signed the 2002 Rome Statue of the International Criminal Court, but again has not ratified it. Of course, it's not a problem for us, either the CTBD or the Rome Statute, because we are not very inclined to sign them either. But again, the US has not actually uh, worked on multilateral principles when it didn't suit its interests. Now, I think that the outlook uh, on multilateralism as the driving force of international relations remains unpromising. The UN is unable to effectively deal with the issue of terrorism which has been raised, which is plaguing the international community. We have not been able to actually define terrorism in the UN and India's proposal for a comprehensive convention on international terrorism has been languishing for several years. Although everybody agrees that terrorism is one of the major challenges that faces the international community. Uh, in our case, we have a particular grouse because China is driving its own nail into multilateral cooperation on the issue of terrorism by protecting Pakistan in the UN Security Council by opposing the, the designation of Jashin Mahmoud Chief Mahmoud other as an international terrorist. The international community is unable to forge an effective multilateral approach even to the issue of containing the spread of Islamic radicalism, not the least because of geopolitical calculations. It is receiving an additional blow because sanctions are being imposed on uh, countries without UN approval. I find it diplomatically confounding that uh, the US uh, as a permanent member is sanctioning another permanent member of the Security Council, that is Russia. Russia, of course, it favors multilateralism as a means of containing the arbitrary excess of power by the U.S. Because Russia as a permanent member with veto powers can make its power felt in the U.N. Security Council, which it cannot do outside the U.N. system because the Soviet Union's collapse left it greatly weakened in its global role. But the sharp deterioration of U.S.-Russia relations makes the search for multilateral solutions to global issues that much more difficult. Uh, Iran continues to be subject to U.S. sanctions despite the nuclear deal concluded between the P5 plus 1 and now President Trump is threatening to undo the agreement with Iran and impose a new set of sanctions even though a multilateral body like the IAEA has continues to certify Iran's strict adherence to the negotiated deal. Such a unilateral step by the U.S. will affect the interests of countries at large including India. In other areas that have become central to the global system, such as cyberspace, there are as yet no rules of the road negotiated multilaterally to govern it. The U.S. has a grip on the functioning of the Internet globally and making Internet governance more multilateral is a challenge before the international community. When it comes to Europe, I'll just take one minute more. When it comes to Europe, they have started raising concerns about multilateralism because of Trump's remarks about EU, NATO, withdrawal from the Paris Agreement, threat of a trade war, recognition of Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, threat to the beauty of the nuclear deal with Iran, America for us, withdrawal from the TPP, and call for revising existing trade accords and finally discarding a values-based foreign policy, and so on. And I would also echo what has been said about uh, China. I think multilateralism is now under threat from China's rise, an open display of its ambitions to replace the US as the world's leading power. China's self centered thinking, its territorial independentment, the predatory nature of its economic policies, its authoritarian system, its military ambitions, 
is rejection of signed international agreements, to my mind, portend a blow to multilateralism, which is based, which must be based on mutual cooperation, respecting the rights of others, willingness to compromise, accommodating the interests of all, and respect for international law. Thank you.